Before we begin, we ask that everyone please turn off your cell phones during Mass. Today is Sunday, January 23rd. In our liturgy, we are celebrating the third Sunday in Ordinary Time. We welcome everyone, especially all visitors, to Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church. Now, if you'll please stand and join in our gathering hymn. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers, sisters, good morning. Good to have you for Mass. Let's ask the Lord's help in our time of prayer, and in our day, and our week ahead. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, mercy. have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Nehemiah. Ezra, the priest, brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at, at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, he read out of the book from daybreak till midday in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it, for he was standing up higher than any of those people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is, his excellency, and Ezra, the priest scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people, said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad and do not weep. For the people were weeping as they heard the word of the law. He said further, Go, eat rich food and drink sweet drinks, and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared. For today is holy to our Lord. But do not be sad in this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also in Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given the drink of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. If a foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. It does not, for this reason, belong any less to the body. Or if an ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It does not, for this reason, belong any less to the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God placed the parts, each one of them, in the body as he intended. If they were all one part, where would the body be? But as it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you. Nor again the feet to the head, I do not need you. Indeed, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are all the more necessary. And those parts of the body we consider less honorable, we surround with greater honor. And our less presentable parts are treated with greater propriety, whereas our all more presentable parts do not need this. But God so constructed the body as to give greater honor to a part that it is without it, so that there may be no, may be no division in the body, but the parts have the same concern for one another. If one part suffers, all parts suffer with it. If one part is honored, then all parts share its joy. Now you are Christ's body and individually parts of it. Some people God has designated in the church to be first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then mighty deeds, then gifts of healing, assistance, administration, and a variety of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work mighty deeds? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as those who were eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word have handed them down to us, I too have decided after investigating everything accurately anew, to write it down in an orderly sequence for you, most excellent Theophas, so that you may realize the certainty of the teachings you have received. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues, 
and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recover the sight of the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year of acceptance to the Lord. Rolling the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Good morning, everyone, and welcome on a beautiful Sunday morning. A day like this helps us appreciate the windows, huh? Good sunlight coming through them, and they're really busting with color. So if you get bored with my sermon, you can look at the windows. I uh, would like to welcome our visitors online and those participating in our prayer and we joining them in prayer. And thanks to John Berusha, the, uh, the, uh, the face behind the camera. Uh, uh, welcome everyone. Visitors in from out of town to join us from Mass today. Where are you in from, guys? From New York. Good to have you in. What, what part of New York? Long Island. Excellent. Good to have you here. Welcome, everyone. Uh, dear children old enough to understand, uh, uh, yeah, that, that's all of you folks. I'm not sure what happened to the babysitters, but they must have had their hands full that day uh, uh, when uh, the, the men were there, the women were there, and the children old enough to understand. What about the youngins? Someone had their hands full babysitting the little ones. I wonder what happened to them. There was Ezra at a, at a moment, a, a great uh, a revival. Uh, uh, things were coming back together. Uh, the Israelites were returned after exile. They were, they were re, uh, uh, reestablishing the, the temple and, and the worship and the devotion there and, and kind of rediscovering uh, of, of uh, the old covenant, hearing it again as if brand new. Uh, and it was a, a great moment of devotion uh, and, and revival of faith and, and celebration, a day acceptable to the Lord. Uh, go celebrate, have fun tonight. Uh, we have reason for rejoicing, they reminded the people. The word, and Luke's gospel now. We start with the very opening verses of the whole gospel today. Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as the eyewitnesses saw it and the preachers spoke of it and the community remembered it and celebrated it, I too decided to investigate everything and write it down for you, Theophilus. We don't know who Theophilus was. The scholars point to the fact that it's a, a name that could Im, uh, 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 indicate all of us, lovers of God, is how the name is translated, Theophilus. That's you and I. So that we might realize the certainty of the teachings we've received. A handing on, a celebrating, and a receiving. That means it comes to us. It enters into us, it becomes a part of our lives. Then after, after that, we, the, the gospel continues on with the, uh, uh, the stories of the birth of the Lord and John the Baptist and, and uh, the little bits and pieces of, of the Lord's young life. And then, bam, all of a sudden, we, we, uh, we, we pick up on, on uh, chapter 4. Uh, uh, Jesus is now public ministry. His baptism accomplished, 
And now he goes back to his hometown. Walk the old familiar streets, call on friends and, and, and family, and as, as was his custom, went into the synagogue to be part of the community prayer. And the uh, uh, focus on God's word, the word, God's word, that comes to be with us, God's inmost conversation and, and, and desire and, and love and energy and life that was spoken through the prophets. Isaiah was the one that they unrolled the scroll for, that was there at the moment of creation when God said, let there be. Notice it was a, an exercise of word. Through him all things were made, says the creed. That word was now there in the synagogue, reading God's word. Now look, he, he knows his Hebrew. Now look, he, he's literate. Now look, he, he, was, uh, uh, he was there as a member of the community and speaking those words of God. Then he himself sits down and interprets those words of God and says, they are now fulfilled in your hearing. The word now announcing that it's come to pass, those words, with his words. Isn't that an amazing thing? There's a compactness to it. There's a, an efficiency. It, it's like that gizmo on your kitchen counter that, that slices, dices, uh, uh, and, and, and does everything. All in one little gizmo, huh? Yeah. yeah. This is amazing. He hands the scroll back to the attendant, all eyes looking at him intently. Intently. There's some intention to it. We, we are intent on, on listening, <clears throat> intent on striving to understand, intent on putting it into our, our hearts and our lives, God's word. Those who were there, us who are here, just as intent by God's grace and faith, looked at him intently, and he said to them, Today this passage comes to fulfillment in your very hearing of those words. By the word who was there to speak, God's love made into a voice like ours. One last thought, friends, is, is uh, 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 something that's, that's been stuck in my, my head for a while uh, and seems uh, appropriate to, to, to comment on here, is how, how we're, we're, we're made uh, uh, hearers of that conversation uh, between uh, the Father and the Son, uh, the Spirit that stirs up our faith and brings us here this morning invites us in like a, like a, not a fly on the wall, mind you, although sometimes we'd, be, we'd like to be a fly on the wall, you know, only if I could have sat in on that conversation. Oh, if I just could have been in the room, boy, you know. We're invited into the Lord's very conversation within himself. And what we do at our Mass, let's give that a little thought for a second, we become part of the conversation Back. We're not just silent flies on the wall. We're not an annoying pest or a, 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 a disturbance of the conversation. We're invited to respond. How? Well, two ways come to mind. One is in our prayer of the Eucharist, there at the altar around which we all gather in our various ways all bringing gifts down the aisle. There's the bread and the wine. Ah, but you bring yours too. 
your talents, your best desires, your good efforts, your resolving to do good, your, your, uh, your intentions, your worries, your prayers, all of that come in and are placed on the altar, as it were, and lifted up to God. And we, remind, we have a, 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 an amazing role to play. We, together, you and I, reminding the Father of what the Son said on the night before he died. He took bread and said. Likewise, when the supper was finished, he took the cup and said, Take, eat, drink, do this. We're reminding the Father of the Son's word. We're now part of the conversation back. Imagine a child Maybe daddy's babysitting for the day while, while mom is off doing something. Daddy decides they're going to do something that, that didn't seem right. And a little child will say, mommy said we shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> Don't tell your mother, kid. Here we go. This will be fun. Huh? There, there's a certain play of, about all that. We get to remind the father of what his beloved son said, and in making those words our words. Imagine how beautiful they are, how they would sound familiar, how they would put a smile on the face of the old man, and pride and love. Imagine how, how, uh, 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 how he, he could, couldn't say no, couldn't say no. Another way we do it is with the Our Father. We have that amazing place of repeating those words that the Word spoke to us. How could the Lord ignore such a prayer? Friends, it's good to be with you as we celebrate God's Word and in an amazing way echo it back to the Father. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and this kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. God's love and mercy exceed the hopes of the human heart. So with confidence, we bring our prayers before the Lord. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that he may empower and support the many different gifts of his people. Let us pray to the Lord. For all government leaders, that they may be, good stead, be in good stead and wise, used wisely and morally the power with which they have been entrusted. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the unity of Christians, that during this week of Christian unity, we may work and pray for the day when all believers will worship in prayer 
at one altar. Let us pray to the Lord. For families divided by any kind of conflict, that they may experience unity through mercy, forgiveness, and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. For all in our prayers, family who are sick and in need of healing, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, including Frank Panza, Charles Savans, and Terence Welch, that they may enjoy the wedding feast of the eternal Jerusalem. Let us pray to the Lord. And we offer the Mass for Jean Rimpaw and Linda Cherney for their rest and peace and for the family that missed them. We pray to the Lord. Eternal Father in your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal your great mercy and love for us. He is your anointed one and the source of our unity and hope. So hear the prayers we offer with confidence through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our offertory hymn can be found in the blue handout at the end of each pew, The Word of God by Steve Janko. And this is sung to the tune of I Heard the Voice of Jesus. Unfurling earth and sky, the wind and sun and sea. Then with a love as close as breath brings forth humanity. Sisters and brothers, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of our King, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the hosts of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim.
<clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of of me. A mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come home. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and...
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 353, One Love Released, number 353. One word, one word. 
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. A couple announcements before we go. Please be seated. If there are any adults for any reason who have not received the sacrament of confirmation or their first communion and would like to receive the Holy Spirit in this special way or would like a refresher course in the basic teachings of the Catholic Church, registration for the adult confirmation preparation classes is currently in progress through the parish office. Classes begin Tuesday evening, February 22nd. Lectors are needed for weekday and weekend masses. If you may be interested in being part of this parish ministry, please check for the information in the bulletin. Details of all parish activities may be found in this week's parish bulletin. Please take a copy home with you as you leave today. Finally, the uh, news has been uh, uh, about the, uh, uh, the volcano off of Tonga, huh? And uh, you remember uh, uh, some months ago, we had a, a priest from Tonga who was uh, uh, fundraising for our, the Carmelite community back there, uh, a, uh, a monastery of, of sisters that are, are uh, there as, as witness and, and missionaries in that powerful life of prayer. Uh, we just have no idea what kind of a mess that whole island is in, uh, but we can imagine it's pretty darn challenging. So uh, you all responded very generously to that uh, uh, appeal over the summertime, and uh, those uh, resources have already been sent over. Uh, however, I thought with, the, uh, with them in the news again and their needs so apparent that we might do something again here. So I'm calling for a, uh, a, a second appeal for the sisters. Uh, my finance council uh, uh, recommended me to uh, set aside 5,000 as matching funds whatever you folks want to give. So for the next month or so, if you'd like to contribute, put something into the mail or, or uh, at the uh, collection at Mass in an envelope, just write down the, the uh, Carmelites in Tonga or Carmelites or Tonga or something like that. Make it obvious to us and then we will match those funds up to $5,000 and forward that on immediately uh, for their help. So uh, that, uh, that, uh, those waves made it all the way to our little shores. Uh, but it was a whole lot bigger and, and uh, uh, more destructive, more destructive uh, back there so close by. So please keep that in mind if you've got a little uh, to, uh, to share. Uh, we'll be happy to match it and uh, forward that on. Uh, finally, a communion to uh, uh, those family at home. Liz Slater, do come up please and thank you. And thanks to all of you for your presence, your participating, and in that regard and so many others, your generous support. By the way, if you haven't checked out the new bathroom set, you've got to see them. They're snazzy. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace. Glorify the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Our hymn is number 125, I'm sorry, 127 in the Missalette. Holy, 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 number 127. Now you've all been a little quiet singing, so we're gonna make up for it for this one. Take it away, <laughs> Olga. 